Hey guys, I'm Nick, aka the one and only Nick's Games, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start a Forge server in Minecraft 198. Now, sadly, sadly, this is not a 24 hour server. If you do want a 24 hour server, it's going to cost you a little bit of money $7 a month or $70 a year. You can get an awesome 24 hour Forge Minecraft server at rkt.us slash apex with any mods you want on it. It's literally up to you. You can install any mods, whatever, on your 1.8 Forge server at rkt.us slash apex. Amazing servers over there. I love Apex Minecraft hosting. Go check them out. They are incredible. rkt.us slash apex. Get a year's worth of a server, a Forge server. Get a year of it. For just $7 a month. Anyway guys, if that's not interesting to you and you just want a server that's online, when your computer's online, that's not public, that's not meant to be given to everyone, that's just for you and your close friends and family and things like that, and like I said, you're fine with it only running whenever your computer is online, then let's go ahead and jump on into this. So first off, we want to download Forge, and to do that, we need to go to files.minecraftforge.net. So it doesn't matter. Second link in the description down below. Go down there, click that. It will take you to this page where we then want to come over here find latest-1.8 and scroll over until we see installer right there click installer it will then take us off to adfly where we have to wait five seconds in that five seconds i want to say this if you have any problems with adfly simply right click and reload if that doesn't work google how to enable cookies on your browser follow the tutorials found there and you'll be good to go nevertheless go ahead and click skip out up here and it will automatically download forge in the bottom we can minimize this, and here is Forge on our desktop. If it is on your desktop, no worries. Same with the Windows key on your keyboard and R at the exact same time. Type in Downloads, hit Enter. It'll be right here in your Downloads folder. Drag it to your desktop just for ease of use. Once it's on your desktop, we want to right-click on it, and we want to open with Java TM Platform SE Binary. Once you have it open, you'll get this little nice installer box. And we want to install server. Oh no, there's a red box. Yes, there is. Because we need to do two things. First, we need to right click on our desktop and create a new folder entitled Forge Server. Very, very easy there. You can actually name this whatever you want. For me, I'm just going to name it Forge Server. You can name it 1.8 Server, 1.8 Mod Server, Forge Server, Forge Server 1.8. Doesn't matter what you title the folder. Just name the folder and put it on your desktop. Then we want to come down here and click on these three dots. Then we want to click right over here on desktop. Then we want to find the folder we just created. In my case, that is Forge Server right there. Double click on it or click on it rather. Ah, come on. There we go. Make sure it says the folder folder name down here slash Forge Server. Click open. Click OK. It's now going to download stuff, install stuff in this folder. We can actually watch it happen here if you want. It's kind of cool because it's going to download stuff, install stuff, like I said, get everything up and running. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll just meet you guys when it's done. We can hit refresh and just watch stuff come in here. There we go, right? There is some stuff. Stuff downloaded, Minecraft Server 1.8, and Forge Universal, both very, very important. So now that both of these are downloaded, we can actually delete this installer that we downloaded off of whatever it's called, the interwebs, after we click OK. Now we can delete that. Now what we want to do is double click on Minecraft underscore server dot one dot eight. Double click that. It will then run some things and boom, install some of that stuff. Open this up. Good. We can then click STOP to stop that. We then want to go into the EULA right here by double clicking on it. It will open up in Notepad. And if we're not going to break anything found here on this server in that URL, then uh, no problem. Simply go EULA equals false and change it to true because I'm not going to break any of the EULA rules with this server. So EULA equals true. File. Save. Close out of that. Now we want to double click on Minecraft underscore server dot one dot eight again. It will then open up that box again, but this time it's going to uh, download and create some more stuff. So as you can see, it's doing a lot of stuff. Wait until it, this stops moving, until 100% of stuff is spawned in and we're ready to go. Done, as you can see. Now we can type STOP yet again to stop that server. Now we're not done yet. We now want to double click on Forge right here. Double click on that. It will create its own set of things, as you can see. And uh, there we go. So that is now up and created. It will open up this, go through everything, FML, all that stuff, Forge Mod Loader, add in tons of stuff. And whenever this stops moving over here, which it looks like it is, 
There we go. Done. Look for that. We then need to type STOP on that as well. Now, to run this server, you're going to double click on Forge 1.8 Universal, not on Minecraft Server.1.8. But still, it's good to just keep that in mind. That's how it's going to go. We're going to be clicking that a lot here in a little while. Now, we need to go ahead and get our IPv4 address to set up this server as joinable. So, we're going to set it up in the server. Then, we're going to do the port forward. Yes, this is a port forwarding tutorial, but don't freak out. I've taught hundreds of thousands of people to port forward. I guarantee I can teach you. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and the Windows key under keyboard and R at the exact same time. Type in CMD and hit enter. If that doesn't work for you, or after you type in IP, C O N F I G, IP config there, if that doesn't work for you, what you need to do is go to the start menu and then type CMD in the search bar, then right click on it and run it as an administrator. As you can see, the exact same box, the only difference is now IP, C O N F I G will work for you. IP config, type that in there and you'll get this your IPv4 address, your subnet mask, and your default gateway. In this tutorial, we're only going to need the IPv4 address and the default gateway. What we need first is the IPv4 address. Where we want to enter it in is server property. So right click on that, open with, it'll pull this box up and double click on notepad. Once it's opened that up, you want to find server dash IP right here, about halfway down the list. Next to server dash IP equals, you want to put your IPv4 address found over here. Yours will most likely be different to mine. That's fine. That's okay. Whatever is right over here, copy it into this. In my case, 192.168.1.3. Yours might be something totally different. That's fine. Whatever it is, put it right there. Click file, save, X out of that. Boom. We're going to keep this open because we're not done with it. But for now, we can close out of this. Let's go ahead and open up this right here and go to the third link in the description down below. Portforward.com slash default underscore username underscore password or much easily, much easier, the third link in the description down below. Go down there, click that. We then want to scroll down and find the version of the router you have. In my case, I would go down to Netgear, right? I would scroll all the way down to Netgear right here. Click that, and then I would scroll down to the kind of router I have, which is the WNDR. Right there it is. Where is it? I just saw it. I just saw it. There it is. WNDR3400, and there is my username and password. Mine's actually different than that because I changed it, but that's all you want to do is go to this website, find your router login information, and then find your router login number or find your router model, and then find your router login. After that, you want to go to the I default gateway over here, the IP default gateway right there. In my case, 192.168.1.1. Yours could be completely different. 192.168.1.1. Hit enter. It will then open up this or something completely different. But guess what? That's okay. All you want to do here is enter the username and password that you found over here. Remember, you found the model kind of router you have, the company that made your router, then the model of router you had, and then enter the username and password that's over here. If it says admin, that means you put admin right here. If it says password, that means you put password right here. If it says none, that means you leave it blank. So if it says username, none, leave it blank. If it says blank, then put the word blank in. It's not too hard, guys. Uh, just enter whatever it says over here and you should be good unless it says none and then you don't enter anything. Nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and enter mine. That is the same with a custom password. We can then hit enter and it will open this up. Just like with the login page, this will look exactly the same or most likely completely freaking different from what you uh, see here. The reason for that is because, right, is because we have different routers and that's okay. This will still work for you no matter what kind of router you have. All we're looking for here is port forwarding. That's what we're looking for, right? It might be port forwarding slash port triggering, but what you're really looking for, what you want to click on is port forwarding. For me, that's in advanced. It's probably there for you as well. And then for me, it's in advanced setup again. It might not be in advanced setup again. For me, for you, it might just be in advanced. But for me, it's in advanced setup and then port forwarding slash port triggering. Mine's combined. Yours might be just port forwarding. Find that. If you don't see port forwarding anywhere on your router, I bet you do see apps and gaming. Look for that. 
It'll be the exact same thing. It's just worded differently. Apps and gaming, same thing as port forwarding. Whenever you found that, make sure you are port forwarding. If it does, combine port forwarding and port triggering. After that, you want to come down here and add a custom service. Click that or add service, add something, enter the information, whatever it is, do that. For this, we can name the service whatever. I'm just going to name it Minecraft. We want to make sure this is TCP slash UDP. If you can only choose one option, guess what? What you want to do is add it twice, once for UDP, once for TCP. Everything the exact same except for that fact, right? You just want to add it twice. Everything exactly the same except for the fact one is going to be UDP, one's going to be TCP. You should, however, have them both combined like I do. If you don't, though, that's what you want to do. Add them both separately. Nevertheless, for the port, we want to enter two. 5565 five, for the external ending port we want to enter 25565 five, and then for the internal ending port we want to make sure or internal starting port right there we want to make sure that autos to 25565 five, as well all the way down 25565 five. for the internal IP address that's going to be your IPv4 address that we found over here so we keep coming back to this in my case 192.168.1.3 for you it might be something completely different but whatever your IPv4 address is right over here Take it and put it in right here. 192.168.1.3. Click apply. It will then add in the service. As you can see, Minecraft 25565, 25565, 25565, 25565, 192.168.1.3, which matches my IPv4 address right over here. That is where most people mess up. So make sure your port forward is correct. If you go and do this next step, which is testing your server and making sure it works, if you do this and there's an issue with your friends joining, right? If you can join it, but your friends can't, the reason for that is because there's most likely an error in your port forward. So make sure that is correct. Nevertheless, once you've done this, it's uh, pretty easy to get your server up and running. We can actually delete this now, guys. Get rid of it. So close out of that. Now we just want to open up this folder and double click on Forge. We then want to also come over here to Minecraft, launch up Minecraft, and uh, join in. Now, I think that this is compatible with default clients, meaning you don't have to have Forge downloaded to play Forge. I might be completely wrong. We are literally testing this in this video right now. So I am joining off of just regular release 1.8. We're going to see if this works. If it doesn't, we'll know that you have to have Forge installed. Kind of an unprofessional thing to do in a tutorial, guys. But I wanted to get this out for you guys as fast as possible and get you the accurate information here. So I want to test it live. We might as well. We're going to direct connect, not to my external IP. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But to 192.168. Dot one dot three, which is the IPv4 address we entered earlier. Correct. Go ahead and click join server. Now, one of two things is going to happen. It's going to either kick us out or it's going to join. And boom, it joined. That's actually surprising. Looks like Forge is now compatible with default clients. To prove that this is the server, there is my gamer tag username, Nick's Games, right over there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Way to go for uh, Forge developers. You can now join this whether you have Forge or not. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. So there is that. Now, how do your friends join it? Because that's what we really want to do here, right? Well, let's go ahead and leave. Go to Google and type in two letters into, uh, into our Google search. Two letters, very simple. I, P. Two letters, IP, IP, UP, IP. Type that into Google, IP, hit enter, and boom, right there it is, the black box that is my public IP address. Why is that a black box? Because you guys can do evil things with it, and uh, I don't want you having it. But, nevertheless, there it is. Copy that, right, and paste it over here into uh, the server address, the direct connect. Now, you don't have to direct connect, you can add it as a server but just for this tutorial with direct connecting paste it there click join server if it joins boom exactly same server we were in we can again come over here and check right there i am nick's games join bada bing bada boom guys your server is now up and running in minecraft 1.8 for your friends to join you want to give them your public ip address that you entered to join the second time if that worked for you chances are it'll work for them if it doesn't work for them it's probably a firewall issue and sadly that is a whole different thing that i can't even get into because i have zero experience with it and i apologize for that literally though nothing i can do just google how to let port forwards through your firewall or something like that but uh nevertheless 
you've got a Forge server up and running. Congrats. If you guys want to know how to install mods on a Forge server, there's a video coming up on that later today. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and drop a like on this video so you can see the tutorial on how to install mods on your Minecraft 1.8 Forge server. Because now that it's up and running, you might as well install mods on it, right? So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm Nick's Games, and I'm out. Peace. And here's some videos you guys might want to go check out. On the left is how to install Forge in Minecraft 1.8. Now that you've got it installed on your server, you need to install it locally to play the mods on the server. If it's just vanilla with no mods running on it, it will work with vanilla right now. Uh, it does not work with vanilla clients if mods are installed, so you got to do that whole thing. And on the right is get plugins in Minecraft 1.8. So you've got a Forge server, right, with mods on it, but... What are mods really? Nothing when compared to plugins, which is what really makes servers awesome. So go check out that video to see exactly how to get plugins in Minecraft 1.8 on your server. Also, you can grow your YouTube channel by checking out the channel at the bottom server screen. It gives you tons of videos, tips and tricks and everything on growing your very own YouTube channel. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Nick's Games, and I'm out. Peace.